Welcome to Full Throttle Driving. I'm Brian Van Oy, and I thought it would be fun to narrate the most recent race I did with the Porsche Owners Club at Button Willow, which is located near Bakersfield, California. This will be our counterclockwise 1A configuration. In this particular race, I'm driving a 2018 Porsche Cup car. It's a 991.2, and I will go ahead and start the video. This is our formation lap. I qualified in fourth, which was a little off the pace. I made one pretty significant mistake in the qualifying session, but pretty good to be second row. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm running uh, takeoff Yokohama tires that we buy pre-owned. So I'm even feeling a little bit better because most of the drivers are uh, running new tires for this race and it's going to be a, a quite a task to stick with them as you'll see they should have a bit more mechanical grip throughout the race just uh, because they're on brand new tires but this would be a pretty interesting race um, coming around the second to last corner here we're preparing for the start just trying to find the flag worker look for any body language see if there's any shoulder movement head movement to try to see when that flag is going to be thrown and unfortunately there's going to be a small racing incident after we start on the first corner so watch for that the red car here in the front left is going to get a little love tap from the car which is right next to me so we're green 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 had a decent start and there's really nowhere to go but you know, there's always potential for something to happen on the first lap and there it goes, slight left tap. Now I'm a little bit confused because the car uh, in front of me, car zero was hesitant and now everyone blows by me. I'm kind of wondering, is this guy gonna get off? Is he just, is he damaged? And now I'm just getting killed. And finally I <laughs> sneak by him and now I think I'm pretty far back. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now I think I'm in seventh. So now it's just a matter of, okay, let's hunker down here. Let's try to retake some of these positions. It's a, I believe this is a 13 lap race. Could be wrong on that. So now it's just about, okay, let's, let's see if we can reel people in and find some good clean opportunities here to pass. The field's already spreading out pretty significantly so the racing should be pretty safe you can see a little bit ahead there um, there's a car a couple cars jockeying for position directly ahead of the orange car so they'll they'll be slowing each other down a little bit so I know I can just be patient if I can figure out how to way to get by the orange car I should be able to get up with the two cars that are uh, battling each other there it looks like um, the white car got passed. So now we'll see if the orange car can catch up to the white car. And they'll slow each other down, which might create an opportunity for me. So what am I looking for? Um, I'm trying to just see what, how well the drivers in front are, are driving the line. How, how much are they at the limit? And... Just trying to figure out if I'm gonna have a moment here. These cars are identical, by the way. We have about 500 horsepower. So it's pretty hard to, to pass people um, on the straightaway unless you would get a really good exit on a corner. I kind of gave a look there, but um, I just wanted to kind of show him I was there. I wasn't really going for it. I know through this section, based on my qualifying times, I'm faster than the two cars in front of me. So I should be able to stay with them with, without too much problem. And he went really wide there, the orange car. Um, so I know that there's gonna be some tendencies for maybe some slight mistakes. And now it's just a matter of being patient. That corner is so tricky to pick your speed. So it was minimum speed 73 that time over the top of the hill, Phil Hill. I think about 75, 76 is about the max I can do. I did go off the track later in this race. If you're wondering if anything interesting happens, um, I do end up going off over the top of Phil's hill and breaking my front splitter completely off. And 
that sacrificed my race because I had no front downforce, so made for a little bit interesting finish. That's uh, later on. So um, the orange car is missing some apexes now, I'm noticing. Going a little too tight there, trying to probably watch me in, a, in the mirrors. So I feel like there's going to be a chance here to sneak by. Just don't know quite when. It's nice now that the orange car caught the white car. Now the white car is going to be paying attention to both of us. And that might cause the white car to make a mistake too. I just kind of checked up there. No opportunity to pass. I don't want to dive bomb. Okay, he missed the apex. Now I, I know that that might be a chance down the road. I'm having to lift quite a bit through the S's here. Normally I'd be going at least 120 through there, not 110, 115. So I know that if I can get by, I'm gonna probably be able to pull ahead. Again, he's quite wide on the uh, exit of that corner. Min speed 71 that time. So the previous lap I was min speed 73 over the hill. So I'm not able to judge the speed as well as I would like. And then I'm over slowing on that corner entry because I'm so close to him. So I was a 92 entry speed on the uh, corner there. So at this point, like the lap time did a 159.4. You can see my best from the previous sessions was a 155. So I'm significantly off the pace right now. And I believe in this race, I did get a 155, which I think was the set. Here we go. I'm gonna pass him on the inside. He went way, way wide. Give me a really clean opening. Okay, so now we're one car down chasing uh, the white car in front. So as I was saying, I think sometimes the fast laps come to you a little bit later in the race. The key with the this tire, uh, the, this track was degrading the tires so much. It was crazy. Everyone was complaining about really massive tire degradation on the right rear. And I hadn't experienced that before at Buttonwell. So we were running out of tires. We were throwing on all kinds of used tires that we had because we didn't bring new ones and um, it was quite difficult to actually get through the weekend this this race we had pretty good pretty good pre-owned rubber and I actually think I actually got the second fastest lap of the race once I uh, once I clear this white car in front so now I'm kind of just faking them out a little bit see you know see so he knows I'm there let's see what we do over the top of the hill here I'm having to check up quite a bit yeah, 65 min speed. That's that's quite slow. Now I just have to pick an, another moment of, of patience and, and try to wait for some kind of a small hiccup. This track's a bit narrow. It's pretty difficult to pass on this track. You know, it's not like a Willow Springs or something. Um, and because there are so many back and forth, right, left, right, left corners, it's a highly technical track. It's difficult to find passing opportunities without taking pretty significant risk. This is one where you can set him up, not on this cotton corner, but the next one. So he went way too far to the left there, so I think I can get him here. Yeah, so he, he, he compromised his exit on that corner because he went too deep on the corner preceding it, which allowed a nice clean exit for me. And now I'm clear. So it's time to hustle and see if there's any opportunity to reel in uh, the people ahead. Um, of consequence here, our radios were broken and I usually have my wife on the radio, but she can't talk to me. So I don't know how far ahead anyone is. So mm, I could do one of two things here. I could just kind of hold my position, kind of try to save my tires for Sunday 
but that's just not my style. I'm gonna try to go for it and just see, hey, maybe people make mistakes. Maybe people will battle and slow each other up. See, now I'm going like 123, 128 through the S's. The, the previous lap I was going like 115 in traffic. So now we're picking up the pace pretty substantially. Um, and I'm just gonna get really focused and just see, can I catch people? Can I knock off another one or two places and get back up? Maybe I can get a fifth or something like that in this race, fifth or fourth maybe. And I can see the cars up ahead, so kind of judging by landmarks where they are. Uh, the car is hooking up pretty well right now. The tires came up to temperature, so I'm carrying quite a bit more speed through uh, Riverside right there. And now it's just a matter of driving real clean and at the limit without overheating the tires too much. Because it's, you know, still have quite a few laps to go. can see the cars just ahead. It's going to be hard to catch him. Kind of missed that apex a bit. This is a pretty quick lap though. Yeah, so 155.8. If I could kind of main, if I could maintain that, which the tires are going to go off, so I can't. I thought I could, and if I had, I definitely would have caught up to people. Um, you know, at this point in the race, probably two or three cars ahead of me are probably doing 57s, 56, 57, 58 laps, something like that. So I was pushing pretty hard there to get a 55. Unfortunately, that pace isn't really sustainable. And I don't really know, oops, somebody, the red car there just was uh, off track. So we've got one car that was ahead of me. I think it was the car that, that got tapped on the first corner. He must have had a mechanical issue, so he's out. So I've already picked up now another position just due to a mechanical issue. So now what do I do? Well. At this point, I don't have a radio, so I don't really know what I'm supposed to do. Um, I'm just going to keep driving and got super clean air in front of me. It's just stay focused, hope something happens, you know, up ahead. And I feel like, hey, if I can keep clipping off pretty quick laps, I know I qualified, you know, right with, you know, the top, you know, to in second, third, and fourth, we were separated by, you know, I think less, about a half a second or so. And their tires, even though they're brand new, will start to go off a bit and they might overheat their tires. So I'm just kind of hoping, well, maybe I'll just stick it out here and see if I can uh, be patient, make something happen. So now I'm seeing the car ahead just going into uh, turn one. So I think I'm gaining on whatever, whichever car that is. I'll know a little bit more as I go through a few more corners, I can kind of gauge the distance. This is gnarly here, the S's are so fast. You can enter it and you just, it's so bumpy. Like my head was bouncing all over the place. You go over those curbs, it's, it's a pretty violent ride. These cars are extremely stiff. In a spec Boxster, it's no problem at all to go over those curbs, the thing's so soft. But in this cup car, uh, it is a jostling ride. Let's see what our speed is, min speed over the top of the hill. Not too fast, 70. I should be closer to 75 over the top of that hill. So it's very difficult to gauge your entry speed when you're breaking uphill and it's a blind corner. That's just, that's what separates, I guess, the very, very top people from um, club racers like us, you know, <laughs> and some of the club racers at Porsche Owners Club are former pros. There are so many exceptional drivers. And in this particular class I'm in, 
It's a 991.2 spec class. It's tended to attract some of the best drivers in the club who have won their classes and they've migrated into this class, which is new for 2024. So it's pretty awesome to have, you know, I think we have 12, maybe 13 of us now. And all the people in the class have, you know, uh, I think almost all of them have won races before. Many of them have won uh, points championships for the whole season in different classes. So you've got a pretty stacked group here and it's, anyone can win really on any given day. I've seen lots of different winners, lots of podiums from different people, which is really what it's all about in this uh, spec racing. So that last lap was much slower, 157. So, you know, things are getting a little bit hot, starting to get a little slippery. I probably over pushed a little bit on lap, you know, five, six, seven. So, but I can see the cars just ahead. And now that I know he went off the red car, I think I'm in fourth place. So I could have just cruised at this point and just, you know, finish the race and save my tires for tomorrow, which in retrospect would have been the wise move. But no, no, I don't do that. I'm foolish and, you know, just thinking maybe I can catch them like all of us racers do. So I just keep pushing as hard as I can. And ultimately it leads to a very small mistake over Phil Hill, uh, which is coming up here. I don't, I'm not sure which lap, but I do go off the track in a very minor four wheels off but straight ahead not even a spin but it destroys my front splitter and it's amazing how you can barely just this track is flat and you go in the dirt and it still destroys the splitter on these cup cars they are just so low and their the splitters are just so fragile it's kind of ridiculous like it's a, it's like a disposable item so you got to be careful see here I'm still pushing as hard as I can still driving pretty clean pretty consistently yeah another 57 lap which would be great if I was up you know if I was up with the leaders ah I totally missed that apex that sucked if I was up you know with the top two or three people and I had a draft I could I could be hanging with them right now and then hopefully forcing them to you know, make a mistake and they would be having to play defense so they would not be doing 55 56 laps they'd be doing 58 59 so, you know if i if we were able to be right together and that's really the fun Th this is not to me this isn't very fun this is just sort of i you know try to remain disciplined and here i think i go off right here <sighs> see that just went too fast over the top of the hill and even that minor, minor off completely destroyed my front splitter. So now, now it's time to think, okay, I'm still ahead of the two cars I passed. If I can just hold on here, I can maintain, but I hear a clicking noise. The front splitter, a piece of it is smacking into the tire and there's another little piece that partially broke off and I don't know how severe it is but it it doesn't feel like it's impeding the car so I try to pick up the pace again and just see how the car feels but what's most noticeable and now I'm like okay this guy's gonna pass me and I want to just see how the car feels because I don't I don't know if I'm gonna continue or not but it's feeling good with one exception and I don't notice it until I get into a high-speed corner so Right now, these corners are ultra low speed. This is like, you know, what, 50s, 40s. So I can't feel that there's no downforce on the front end of the car. And because these cars are, they don't have much front downforce unless you have that front splitter. And even then, they tend to push a little bit. Without a front splitter, it's very difficult to drive. When I go into Riverside, it feels like it's gonna fly out, like wash out on me. The car won't turn. 
Um, there's just no downforce on the front end. Air gets underneath the car and you have to just lift. You have to do a lot more trail braking. You have to be a lot more delicate um, with the throttle application. And, you know, I don't know right now that the front splitter is broken. I'm just, you know, I'm just driving and I, I don't even know if I have damage to the car. I just know something's flopping around a little bit. It's not slowing me down too much, but I do notice it coming up here on Riverside and that's when I start to suspect, okay, front splitter took some damage or it maybe broke off. Now going over this corner, now he almost went off, see? Almost did the same thing I did. But in this corner right here, that's when I start to feel, oh gosh, this car not turning. And I'm, look how much slower I am right here. I'm like almost 10 miles per hour slower in the midpoint of that corner because there's just no downforce on the front end. All right, so now I'm thinking, hmm, I'm still staying with this guy and he's driving, he's getting frustrated or tired, but he's making mistakes, so I'll stay with him and maybe I can get by him again. And then retake that position and then come home for the, uh, for the place I was in. I, it would probably be a fourth place at that point. So I think I might get him here. Yep. So that was a pretty clean, you know, easy pass. Um, the problem comes when I, I, I start to feel like the car isn't all perfect and I'm just a little concerned that I might cause damage and I, I don't know. I just, if I was on the radio, I probably would have just kept going and had a great race and finished up where I am. I think fourth place. Um, but I end up retiring and in retrospect, I shouldn't have done that. Um, there was no damage to the car except for the front splitter. So something was just kind of slapping the front wheel. But you can see here, look how much slower I am through the S's, like five miles per hour slower because there's no front downforce. There's just, it's not, there's no confidence in the high speed corners. The low speed feels the same, no, no difference. So if any of you have a car with a lot of front downforce, uh, you'll know what I'm talking about if something is damaged on the front. So that was still fine where you really notice it is coming up here on, on Riverside. I'm gonna slow down right through here a lot more than normal. It just didn't feel right. These low speed corners like that still felt good. Now this one didn't feel good, this one doesn't feel good these slower speed corners still work pretty well. So I don't know. I, I, I should have just kept going. I, I think, I think there are only two laps remaining. And that radio boy, that would have helped a lot. So my wife could have told me that, that, that I was, you know, had plenty of room between me and the car behind you. She would have said, Hey, you're not gaining on anyone, on anyone anymore. Your last lap was a two minute flat, which I, I have no idea. So you're, you know, after you broke the splitter off, you're vastly slower than you were <laughs> uh, 158. So that was pretty quick, I guess for no front splitter, but I'm not going to catch anybody in front of me. So might as well hold on and just, you know, finish the race and then save everything for tomorrow and get, get that front splitter replaced. Which we end up doing. But now I'm just wasting tires, but I should have still finished. This was just a bad decision by me to abandon. I think I abandoned on the white flag lap too. Yeah, it feels real slow through there.
I guess one of the takeaways is sometimes you can get tired. You can start making dumb mistakes. Um, I tend to, my wife and I both focus a lot on fitness and just eating right. We look at this as an athletic activity and I try real hard to stay fit. Oops, look at that stupid mistake. I just went off again. Overcooked it and then lost a position. So this race is definitely a lesson in what not to do. I think that's the white flag lap too. And I should have just wrote it out. I might have been able to pass him again. He made another, he went way wide there. Yeah, so I abandoned. <laughs> anyway, I'll make another video for the race on Sunday. It was a little bit more close fun racing and not any, uh, not big mistakes like that, that one. Thanks for watching.